Uh, we're in Tampa, Florida at Vincent Corporation. We have samples here from Southern Green. We're going to run them in a KP6 press. You'll see it has the uh, rotating cone feature with those pins sticking out, uh, bol actually extended bolts. And uh, we have a perforated screen, very fine perforation. I think they're uh, 33 thousandths. Um, I've, got a, I've got an air pressure regulator here. And so I'm going to uh, use it to, to close the discharge cone. And um, with that, uh, you can try pouring some in. We're going 20 RPM. We have about 20 PSI. We'll see if this pours. We may have to take the big lid off the... Uh, this is the material. It smells a bit. And some juice you know, down there. Maybe some juice further down. Yeah, there is. It's a little more juicy. A little more juicy down towards the bottom. We would probably program the VFD to go backward and forward to unstaple things like that plastic straw or a yeah. rubber glove. That auto reverse feature is going to be useful in this. Yep. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. And where we go. You can see the rotating cone feature here. There's our screen. Okay, getting clear water out. And it started at the first resistor tooth. Now we're all the way getting down there. And it's still, uh, well, it's not clear water, but it's definitely uh, water you could probably put down the sewer. And uh, we're not having a lot of fiber or solids go through there. It'll be leaking water to start with, but that's because we haven't built up a plug. The stuff being pushed out right now hadn't been squeezed. It's just been conveyed along. Might want to go to a coarser perforation than that, or use a wedge wire screen, because seeing some of the stuff in there, we're apt to have something that would tear that fine perforated screen. To open, uh, keep coming out all the way around the cone rather than channeling out one side. It's um, uh, low pre air pressure. You can see that, and. Uh, a little bit of a mess. So this is what we're doing. We're catching the liquid and the cake. And um, we'll uh, weigh these and uh, uh, we'll at least get a split of what percentage is separated. I'm not trying to get a capacity test here in kilos per hour. Screen's not blinding. Some sludge coming through the screen up there. Yeah, I think this should work on a wedge wire uh, screen and it'd be a lot more robust. Oh, the rotating cone's helping. That's keeping this stuff coming out. And um, yeah. there's a straw that's made it all the way through. Occasionally, might just have to stop it and run it backwards for a few turns and forward again to unjam stuff that gets stapled or hairpinned inside there. Not much liquid coming through now, and uh, we're down to empty. Okay, the first pail that we ran was uh, 1A. This is 1B. This looks more like prior sludge to and me. And this looks more like prior sludge. Uh, don't yeah. think it's going to work nearly as well. Um, who knows? Anyway, what I'm going to do is stop and um, see how much weight split we got since there's obviously two different materials here. Okay, now we're going to try the pail of 1-B as in boy. And we've stirred it up. And it's 
you know, obviously different. It doesn't have rubber gloves and so forth. Looks like Sloppy Joe. That's going in. And we're getting some water out. And I think I see more uh, solids coming through in the water as compared to some of the original stuff. And uh, of course we're getting cake out that maybe we'll see a difference. Um, that would be residual, excuse me, that'd be residual uh, cake from the A1 material. Yeah, A2 has definitely got a lot more uh, fines coming through the screen. And the cake is starting to come out differently. That looks different me, to me. And that's uh, some residual material. Oops, I'm not getting much more cake out now. And the screen is, the flow is going down too slow to be economically viable. The amount of liquid being separated is too little and too thick with solids to be economically viable. Um, I don't think we have a money maker here. I don't know if you're hard pressed it might be Look at all that solid coming through. And nothing much happening over here. And things are stuck. I'm gonna pop the cone open to get that out of there. Dump that low, there we go, there was something stuck there. I'll close the cone again, and we'll see how this behaves. This will be more representative. And of course we still have an inlet hopper. Well, enough of material to uh, keep working if it was going to work. I think it's churning. I don't think it's actually pressing through. Yep, it's just churning around in there, not making any real cake, not getting anything thick enough to push that cone open at 20 PSI. I can lower the cone pressure, but you'll see it doesn't make any difference. I'm going to take it from 20 PSI where it is on down to, say, 5, something ridiculously low that doesn't work long term without a tension. This is very low air pressure and um, percent separated by weight. Yeah, you know, you'll have to do on-site testing to see if you really want to do this. Uh, the B stuff as compared to the A stuff. You might have something with that lower if they can deal with the solids. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see if this is any good for you. Um, at least we'll, we'll be able to get material from the uh, 1A pail. Press liquor, we had 9.9 .9 pounds. Press cake, we had 12 pounds. So roughly we got a little less than a 50-50 split between liquid and solids when we ran that material through the screw press. The uh, crew is going home for the day, uh, but this is where uh, guys uh, manufacture screws. You can see uh, we have uh, a lot of screws handy, various stages of completion, another work area. Uh, there's another screw being welded out, repaired, and uh, another work area, a couple of screws down there. Yeah, we do make an awful lot of screws for our screw presses. There's uh, shafting for one, and uh, there's some more screws, and uh, there's one in a lathe. That one's probably eh, close to 24 inches, maybe not that big. 
these are the flights that we use for making these screws and of course we have all different sizes and shapes of flights um, because of the different pitches in these screws.